then comes another thing. If we're going to have a drug that kill a bacteria that we have got inside of our bodies, we, we, then, then it has to find that bacteria. And inside the bacteria is what we call a target that the compound has to reach because it's going to bind to the target and hopefully kill the bacteria or make sure it doesn't grow anymore. When we start trying to make something new, we can say we can look at what we call novel targets, targets that has not been used before to develop new antibiotics. However, the problem then is we don't really know very much about the target. And that means that things like toxic effects, it's a bit sort of question mark, resistance, meaning that uh, the bacteria become resistant toward the drug. We don't know very much about that either. Bioavailability mean how easy it is to reach this target. It's also a question mark. So to go for novel targets, as we say, could be a big challenge. And usually the outcome of doing this is that we just get a few compounds that we surviving into the clinical development. When we start down here, we might start with 10,000 compounds. And when we end up here, we have a handful of compounds and most of them, most of these will probably fail. If you do the other thing and say, well, we know about quite a few good targets for developing antibiotics. Sure, we could go for that. And then uh, we can say that that's good because then we can predict a lot of things. Um, properties can be predicted, new interaction sites we can find. We, we can also look at how we can get around this, the thing with resistance. However, if we do that, there are, we can get many compounds, but they will usually fail and they're not new. They use a mechanism that is old, which will be a problem because then we have all these problems with resistance that you will hear more about later in this course and you probably have heard about already. So th there is some pros and cons for both these strategies. Then we have to know a thing about uh, our, the favorite thing to do for a medicinal chemist. Let's do what we call a structure activity relationship study. And what does that really mean? Well, imagine that the target I talked about is this glow. It's a plastic glow we use in the lab. And then the whole idea here is you want to find the hand that fit perfectly into this glow. So you know you see the easily that, oh, we need to have five fingers, but it's a question about the size of the fingers and all that sort of stuff to fit perfectly in here. And what this really means is that we make a compound, we test it, see how it fits in the glow, because maybe we don't know exactly how the glow looks, how long the finger should be, how wide the hand should be. But we test the compound, see what we get out of it. Based on that, we go back, design a new compound, test it again, and we continue in that circle. If we do that properly, we probably test several thousand compounds that way. So it's a very laborious thing to do. But that's actually how you develop drugs. Design it, synthesize it, test it. Start all over again, same cycle. Until you find a compound that bind or fill all the fingers of the glows, it fits perfectly. Then you have your lead compound. So what more do we have to think of then? Well, if you're going to have a useful drug, it has to do something with the, the, the problem. And if this is a bacteria, we like it will kill the bacteria or stop the bacteria from growing. That must be an absolute requisite. Now, to test that outside the body in a small petri dish or in a lab, it's very easy. But if you're going to test that on human beings, we have to think about all the stuff I showed you about. How is the compound absorbed? How is it distributed in the body? Does it manage to find its way to the target? Is it soluble enough? Do we see any toxic effect? And so on and so on. So that's quite tricky. Have appropriate pharmacokinetics properties. That means what the body does to the drug. That's metabolism. The problem is 
if the body breaks down the antibiotic to a toxic metabolism, it could be unhealthy for us and we could die. And of course, we don't want that. And the compound also has what we call appropriate pharmacodynamic properties. And that's what the drug do to the body, the opposite thing. And that basically means, is it toxic by itself? Does it interact with other things in our bodies? Bear in mind, the antibiotic should only interfere with bacteria, not with our cells. If I say like this, all drugs on the market, and I say 100% of them, have side effects due to this. It's only a question about dose. If you overdose on the drug you got from your doctor, you will get side effects just because of this. That's with all drugs. There are no drugs without side effects. It's only a question about dosing. So from this, you will probably think like, hmm, making a drug sounds pretty difficult. Yeah, it's really like finding a needle in a haystack. It's a big challenge.